All right, where we left off, we have the MySQL container running and the shipping Docker application container running. What I'm going to do next is, so I'm actually gonna stop the application container. And because that stopped and we have that remove flag when we created it, it will be removed. It won't exist anymore after it gets stopped. So we only have the MySQL container left remaining. Perfect, okay. So what I wanna do is head into my site's PHP app directory and in here we have Docker and application. I'm gonna remove RF application in here and I'm gonna run my application container. I don't need to share ports. Um, I don't need, I don't wanna push it in the background. I wanna see its output. I'll remove when we're done. And I'm gonna share the current directory instead of the application directory, which I just removed, right? So application doesn't exist. I'm gonna share that into varwdubdubhtml inside of the container. And we're gonna reuse my container here. And the container has composer installed in it. And we're gonna do composer create project Laravel slash Laravel and put it in a new directory in this in here named application. So we're gonna recreate the application directory with a new Laravel build and I'm running Composer within my application container, right? So it's running PHP and Composer within the container. And I need to spell Laravel correctly here. And one thing I forgot to do here is set the working directory, right? So I need or want my application to be created in var www.html slash application. So what I need to do to make that happen is set the current working directory to var www.html inside of the container. So the container is gonna spin up, it's gonna CD into var www.html, and then run our command here, composer create project Laravel Laravel application. And it'll create it inside of the application directory inside of var www.html. And since we're sharing that here in my local host of the current directory, that's what print working directory will do, the current directory in my computer, which is sites PHP app. It will add Laravel uh, in the application directory. The application directory will then exist on my Macintosh drive as well, because these locations, the var.html location in the container is linked, is volume, is mounted, is binded, whatever the word is, to the current directory on my local host. All right, so. I now have the application directory recreated. Inside of application is a Laravel app. And I think that container finished, it did, so it killed itself because I had the dash dash rm flag when I created it. And of course, remember that I share different directories here to get that to happen and set a working directory. So this is the type of command you might want to run whenever you need to run like a artisan command or a composer or something like that so far in our course. We'll see how to simplify this a lot later. In any case, I want to rerun the app container and we're going to do this a little bit differently. I'm gonna name it, so we're gonna name it app so that it can get a host name, a host name of app, and then we're gonna add it to the network that currently exists and also has the MySQL container in it, so appnet. I'm gonna push it to the background, remove it when we're done. I'm gonna share it or port forward localhost port 80 into port 80 into the container. Remember before I did 8080, but it doesn't matter. As long as 80 is available on my host computer, I can use it. And we're gonna share the application directory once again to var.html public, and let's see, I don't wanna do that actually. The application directory here already has a public directory in it. I wanna share that to var.html, and var.html public will exist in the container because Laravel has that in it. And we'll run shipping docker app latest once again. And I think I should be able to curl localhost now, and yeah, see, this is the Laravel homepage, and let's see that here. Okay, so Laravel is up and running, perfect. Now. I want to perform an artisan command here. So I'm going to execute. I think that's the easiest way. I'm going to do docker exec dash it. The working directory will be var html where the application is inside of the container. And the container is app that's up and running right now. And I'm just going to do php dash v to make sure this works. 725, great. And print working directory, var html Perfect, okay. So from here, I can do php artisan list, and I wanna get the list of commands available for artisan because what I wanna do is make uh, auth. I wanna get the auth scaffolding here. So I'll do make auth, all right. And then I can do, well, what can I do here? I, what I wanna do is to run migrations. So I wanna do php artisan migrates because the auth scaffolding has migrations will get an error because it doesn't know how to connect to the database yet. So by default, my application.env file has my SQL and it's trying to connect to localhost. So everything here is relative to the container it's running in, right? And the MySQL container is not running locally on the application container, right? It has its own IP address and its own network name and its own network name is MySQL, right? We named it MySQL, we named that container MySQL and the host name becomes MySQL. And we had a database named Homestead with a username Homestead and a password of secret. So I think we should be all set here. Let's try it out. 
All right, see the migration ran, perfect. So here, if I refresh, we'll see login and register, so I can register. All right, I'm registered, I'm logged in. Let's go ahead and log out. And I'll just log back in to make sure that this took. All right, perfect. So I have an application up and running. My SQL is running with it. We saw how to connect the two, right? We saw how we can make a network. And then we added the containers into that network when we spun them up, and then they got a host name, right? My SQL or app based off of the uh, name of the container that we created that we told it to make. And then the containers can communicate with each other over that network using host names that are based off of the name of the container. In our case, that's my SQL for my SQL container and app for the app container. And then we had just a really simple change to connect the MySQL container from the app container, right? Because both containers are in the same network, my app container is able to communicate to the MySQL container using hostname MySQL. And this is really nice because we don't have to know IP addresses or anything explicitly, we just use the host names. And that's a little bit of how you can get containers running and communicating with each other kind of in a manual fashion. What we're going to do in the next part of this course is to use Docker Compose to see how to automate this all together and make it really simple to do it with a configuration file.